I got one message for you two. We're going to be reacting to the full Rocky Restarts death order and plot. If you're watching the VOD right now, the video, hit that like button. I would truly appreciate it. If you're just here in general, in the stream too, uh, hit that like button also. So let's check this out. Let's see what Steven has to say. I'm excited about this because if Steven's just going to give us all the plot in one 30 minute video, let's go. Like, <laughs> I want to know what the death order is. I want to know what like their ideas were. And on top of that, I kind of want to know more about their new fan game, but they probably won't talk about that in this, new in this video though. But they are working on something new. If you guys didn't know, Rocky Restarts is canceled and Steven is moving on to a new project and the new project looks amazing. It looks fantastic. So. Well, the one thing that I liked about Rocky Restarts was the setting. I think the setting was really cool. The camp setting was very unique compared to other fan games, but you know. I just hope Steven is doing good. It's the holiday season. Hey, it's Steven's voice! And look, I got you guys a gift. What better way to spread the holiday joy and cheer than to talk about people dying? I don't think I've ever heard Steven talk before. Feeling the death order because you guys care for some reason. Some of you care. I don't know about all of you, but some of you do. I, I like get comments every once in a while. And here I am actually doing it. Aww. I'd highly recommend Oh, wait, what? Hold on. What did that say? So are you going to reveal the death order or what? It's been months. August 1st is when this obnoxious video came out and it's December. How long are you gonna make everyone wait? It's canceled. You're obviously not coming back to this project, you dumb. <laughs> Whoa! Somebody went. <laughs> this is what you don't do to creators, y'all. Don't do this. This is disrespectful. Do not do this to fan game creators ever. I hope this was just for the video because this is mean, bro. This is <laughs> this is heck of mean. Yo, y'all gotta chill. Let's calm down. Wait, what does it say? Please just reveal it. I know he's the killer. There's a bunch of hints. Like he set the trap up himself to protect himself. And then he died, but he can still be the killer. It's the chapter two twist. Please tell me I'm right. Please, this can't be the end. If I'm right, which I know I'm, they'll give me a 800K instead and I'll be rich. My life will be fixed. Please just tell me the killer. Wait, wait. <laughs> Yo, somebody was going off. And here I am actually. What, what is happening? I highly recommend watching the Rocky Restarts cancellation video. Um, do I highly recommend it? I think I do. That has context, cause then you could, cause in that I over exaggerate how much I hate this. All the actually, no, I under exaggerate actually, because I reread it all. Yeah, that, that looks so fake. It looked like a fake comment. Oh my god. It's probably just for the video. I didn't know. I, I was already saying it was the worst thing ever back then, and then I reread it. Yeah, I'm re-recording the beginning of this video right now, so r right about at this point, there's going to be a massive drop in energy, because, like, at the end of recording this, I just was like, okay, it's nearly done. I'm hyper for some reason. <laughs> Why am I telling you this? Shut the f if you didn't have a very Yo, good Steven holiday sounds time, awesome. This is a nice little surprise for you. And if you did have a very good holiday time, I hope this ruins it. Oh! If you're watching this later and it's nowhere near Christmas, then I don't want you here. No I hope way. you ain't slapping my head like that. Christmas, God damn. And your present back to me is that I blast this video with ads and you give me ad money. Oh my god, thank you. You're too kind. <laughs> let's give let's give Steven this ad money. Death order. Rocky restarts full death order. Let's yeah, do it. When I first came up with this idea, I was like, holy shit, this is the perfect time to do this. And then I started making the Google Doc. Because Thanks, Julius. That, I appreciate it. It took a, a little bit longer to write than I expected, but it's done. And now I have two days to do this. And I'm recording this on the night of the first day. So there's like one day left. Oh my. Because of that, this, this is beautiful. Will be, uh, Going into way less detail, it's basically just a quick recounting of the God, story. the nostalgia. No on random trivia and some goofy visuals or something. I loved this. Well, the doc goes into a ton of detail. Too much detail. Check the description for that. All right, quickly now. I have Wait, what did that say? I'm hiding Check in your walls? Hey, right, chill, Steven. <laughs> chill out. day to do this, basically. Also, major spoilers for, every, for literally everything. <laughs> Duh. So you know how the prologue went, hopefully. Everyone wakes up on a bus without memories. Yep. Comically long introduction sequence with comically short intros. Yeah. Monokuma shows up and does nothing. Kim cries and the prologue ends. I'm also going to be giving advice on. 
I heard that noise. <laughs> the regular shot. <laughs> How to run a fangun in this video, now that I have a lot of experience. And for one, don't be afraid to space stuff out. Take your time. I yeah. shoved all the intros all into one place and it was freaking awful. Feel yeah. free to spread your intros out throughout the prologue. A few at the start, a few after the mascot shows themselves, a few near the end. You know, it's alright to deviate from how things usually go if it makes for better pacing. And that's what I say all the time! I agree, that was that was great advice right there. Don't be afraid to deviate from the formula just a little bit, or even a lot. Like, do what you want to do. Um, yeah, Steven is right though, that prologue was pretty... Uh, I'm not gonna say bad, but yeah, they, it could have been done a lot better. <laughs> Think of your fangin' like writing a typical book where you need to focus on pacing, yep. the emotions your reader should be feeling. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's easy to purely focus on the beats you have to hit to be a fangin' and not making an actually good story. I know that happened to me a lot, at least. Continuing, chapter one was basically Glenn's scared of people and wants to live in the forest. He does that. Kim feels bad. He dies. Kim feels more bad and cries for it. Turns out Autumn killed him to escape with Nora because she wants to fix her. Now chapter two, everyone gets their secret That execution was Melody dope though. Melody bullied, unprompted. Emily has a mental breakdown because birthday. At said birthday, Melody is the candle. Okay, slow down. We're on to the new stuff. Okay. You want to know pretty decently in depth how the trial was meant to go? Bro, it's the killer, Dennis, bro. Is it Dennis? I feel like Dennis, because the motive made it seem like it would be Dennis. Figures everything out. Then check the Google Doc in the description. Here, I'm just gonna say how the murder went down and then who our oh so evil killer is. If it's not Dennis, so I'll be surprised. All the party stuff is like, oh, this is my time, and begins contemplating. First, the killer sets up the dresser trap, and there should be. Yeah, a this was an elaborate on screen killing. Right that's what Melody heard that one night when she was like, I heard a ghost. Yeah. Set up this trap, the killer would have had to have bought a squirt gun and clock from chinatsu so that must, that must have been fun okay they fill the squirt gun up with a bit of gasoline that kim and marcus brought then the day of the party the killer started the generator at a specific time with a specific amount of gas is that gabby hannah that way oh no they could have it run out at the exact time they need they set the alarm to go off at that same time and are sure to place candles near the area in easy reach just in case anyone were to need a light source yo what the alarm and that's all what? I think this sounds like an easy murder to solve since it's so short. Maybe it is. I don't know. But the amount of math that's needed to be done in this case yeah. is just awful. And if Dennis didn't exist, then everyone would probably die. <laughs> now, who actually did all this? Yeah, who would? Uh, Wait, no. What? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Oh, an ad. Steven. <laughs> Steven just hit me with an ad. What the? It was Dennis. Boy. Dennis didn't kill Melody because of the I knew it. motive. No, he killed Melody because of that little side thing Monokuma mentioned. The motive! He used up all the cast's money to fund the killing game. Yup. If that's the case, then Dennis's family could have been left homeless, and that's his worst fear. Yeah. He's not a violent or evil person, though, so he tried to make the murder as easy for him mentally as possible. He chose a trap so that he wouldn't actually have to do anything himself. Wait, he chose something that was easy mentally on him? Bruh, you know how much math, how much calculating, how much time that would take to set up that whole murder? <laughs> that was not easy mentally. Elf, and he targeted Melody since she wasn't exactly the most appreciated person there by that point. So getting rid of her would lay less on his conscience. Even though it made him feel even worse than it probably would have done with anyone else. In the process of trying to come up with the most moral murder he could do though, he ended up ruining Emily's birthday and giving Melody a horrifically painful, slow death. It really backfired. Yeah. That made him feel really guilty, so to make up for it, he sort of, like, wanted to help out during the trial, which cost him his life, but it made him feel better, so... It could have been a really sad trial, I think. Especially what would his execution be? Autumn, who is a very sympathetic killer, as you guys know. It's you stupid! As for Dennis's execution, I have written it, mostly. Oh, really? My okay. composer of the new orchestra made the great track for it that'll be playing in the background. Hey, this and track is hot! The concept artwork drawn by the wonderful Von Creep. Hey, what's up, Thanks Empire? Switch. Thanks for the dono! Thanks for coming to the Starts stream. Nice. Monokuma asking Dennis difficult trivia questions, which he'd answer successfully with relative ease. 
Okay. With each question, he's forced to answer quicker. The audience of Monokuma is throwing things at him as they think he's cheating. Eventually, the questions reach a point where they're so fast, it's practically impossible to answer. Oh! And the question comes up that he'd struggle to answer. I never fully decided on the specifics of this question, something like, are you a terrible person? Since obviously he's feeling a lot of guilt and would want to answer yes, but thinking logically about the things he's done in his life, he'd want to say no. Oh! Way, he takes too long to think about it and fails the question. The stuff the audience is throwing at him grows more dangerous. He grows more panicked and tries to run away. Monokuma, having planned for this, takes the prize car and chases after him with it, running him over. What? He slowly <laughs> dies on the ground, and the car directly hitting him, and the crowd continuing to throw stuff at him. You madman! Okay, there. Chapter two's done. How underwhelming! You absolute madman! Chapter three. <laughs> this chapter really did not. That was pretty cool, though. Planned. I'll just say the basic gist of it: the deaths, and then if you want any more info, you can check the Google Doc. Oh, okay. Uh, unused art asset intermission time. Whoa, go back, go back. Whoa, too fast. Oh, unused art asset intermission time. Oh my god, this art of Nora? Sheesh. Oh, that looks really good. I love Steven's art. Steven's art is so good. Look at this. Look at them all together like that. Oh my god. Nora's ugly roommates. The girl actually kind of cute though. Might remake her. That's what I was Hey, that is what I'm saying. Hey, remake this character, Steven, right here. Right here. Please. Death portrait concepts? These are kind of cool. I like <laughs> melodies look so messed up. Let me take myself off the screen real quick. So y'all can see it. Melodies melodies look so messed up. <laughs> that is so mean. But I like these concepts, though. They look pretty clean. So this wait, the mini games for who? Who was that? Trial mini games for Marcus and Mar uh, Marina. Marcus is based off Doki Doki Literature Club. Oh, what? Marina's based off Stardew Valley. That's dope. That's that's a cool idea, okay. So this chapter starts out with everyone coping from the last chapter. Monokuma reveals that the killing game is gonna have to be put on slight hold due to a storm that's gonna pass over the camp. Okay. Although he does open up a new area. It's a mountain hiking trail which features a firewatch tower and all that good stuff. Oh he has to take shelter in either the diner or the trial cave. I never decided which. And reinforce it with the plans of waiting the storm out. Monokuma would be with them the entire chapter, so that would have been fun. Anyways, I like the idea of the storm. The power goes out. Not wanting to be stuck in the dark for days, the group decides to send a few people out. I never decided who. The people that are sent out don't come back, so more people go out to search for them. Keep in mind that this is over the course of a few days. Okay. Everyone has their own reasons for going out, like Angela, who wants to prove herself as someone the group can rely on due to recent insecurities. Or Emily going out because she thinks being in a storm would be fun. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, eventually everyone's out and missing besides Kim, Alexander, Nora, Victor, and Jesse. By that point, Alexander's actually cooperating and being nicer to Kim since he feels bad for how everyone treated Melody and took it a, as a bit of a reality check. And Kim's just being tortured because she's like, holy shit, everyone's outside and, we're all and they're, they're all dead and we're not doing anything. Okay. So Victor suddenly remembers something, but he won't tell anyone because he's even more of an asshole than he was the last chapter. Wait, Eventually, really? <laughs> the fear is just too much, and Kim decides to go out on her own, thinking her athleticism could give her an advantage. It doesn't, and she nearly died. Oh no! Literally being knocked off the side of a mountain and dangling for her life, but Alexander frowns. Wait, that's kind of like his, uh, uh, the mock execution that. Steven made for Kim? That's kind of similar to it. He decides to be useful and relevant and grabs Kim, revealing the holy shit he's a robot arm. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, where did he get the robot arm? Hey, explanation, please. Anyways, I never fully decided what happens after that. What? Probably managing <laughs> to find the watchtower, which would be where they find a few people hiding out and discover that the whole electricity grid thing is destroyed, so like, no more electricity for them. 
Slowly over time, more people are found, most having pretty bad injuries from the storm, until they find something. A pink slipper. Pink slipper. Following that, they come to discover some sort of building. I never decided which building. Who died? I said that building is the corpse of... No. Hunter. <gasps> the poor boy's been killed gruesomely. Hunter? I never really decided on exactly how. I only decided his cause of death in the original version of this chapter, so... Very sad. Why? Anyways, continuing on. He was so the precious. Building, the cast finds the corpse of Angela. What? In a similarly gruesome state. No. Two deaths. Oh, my poor girl. She didn't deserve any of this. Again, Angela never and Hunter. On the cause of death for this version, but I do know it would have been obvious from the scene that she put up a big fight and likely survived for a good amount of time before succumbing <laughs> to her wounds. Aww. Also, the reason the killer is allowed to kill three people in the rules is because in this original chapter, three the, people. The killer also targets Kim, and she nearly falls off the cliff and dies. So there's that. Wait. So, so the killer was trying to kill Kim too. So Kim almost died because of the killer. It wasn't just like a, you know, by chance thing or by an accident. Uh, the people leaving the dark shelter to fix things must have been driven mad by Monokuma's never-ending banter. I know, right? Who's the killer? I don't exactly have a case to talk about since I never made it. So I'll just tell you who it is okay. and their motive. Who's the killer? The killer of Angela Lavelle and Hunter Murphy is none other than... Nah, man. Cox Internet, number one... No, yeah, hey, hey! Even this <laughs> it's none other than Cox Internet. <laughs> Yo, Steven, you're wrong for this. You're wrong for this. You're freaking wrong for this. You're like... Fang and Tip are paying a good character. So wow! Much them and makes them easier to oh, write. look at this character. I like her. This is basically why Eternal Endings exist, though. Really helped me at least. Oh, role playing? Role playing would be a good idea. <laughs> the killer is Cox Internet. <laughs> Maybe try it. Find a nice RP group. There's usually people promoting their RPs in Fang and Server promo channels. Okay. Anyways, the killer is Marcus, that piece of shit. His motive Marcus? Was that after the chapter two trial- Marcus would do this? Suspected, and he develops a bit of a grudge against everyone. He already didn't care yeah, he much did. for anyone, but he did. that chapter got rid of any reason he had to try to survive with everyone. So he's just on his own. So Marcus tries to come up with the most logical murder he can. Okay. Dealing with facts and logic. With no motive this chapter, he figures that this is a great opportunity to make things more difficult since with no motive, everyone's equally capable. And he it's realizes true. that committing murder in a dangerous situation like the storm would really complicate things for everyone. Yeah. Why did he kill two people? To flex, pretty much. What? The masses can't even kill one person while I'm over here about to kill two. Yo, this he man would kill two people to flex. Back. Honestly, I like it. He's just a cocky little goblin. I like that. Much better than his original motive, at least. Dude was originally a freaking yandere that was trying to kill Kim since she didn't accept his love letters. Mm. Yikes. Not this. Yeah, not this. Why did I do that? Why? Bruh. Steven, the don't do this. The execution firm was not fully made, so I don't have much to say on that. I'll just say I'd have liked it to involve poetry and acid rain, since that was in his old execution and fits the storm scenario very well. Well, chapter three's done. Marcus, Angela, why the fuck did I write? I wrote Marcus twice. Hunter are officially dead. Bang and tip break. <laughs> Don't be afraid to like mask your inability to do something with creativity. Yeah. Is this a dumb tip? I don't know. All my tips blow. I don't. This just came in handy a few times. Like for example. Drawing all the panels and programming for the closing argument game would take far too long and be way too difficult, so I just decided to do the killer replay thing. Just think of that when something gives you trouble. Don't be afraid to technically downgrade mm. if it means your fang is able to continue. People will still that's, like it. Now, that's what I've been saying! That's what I've been saying, because a lot of people that I know that are fangan creators, like, you know, they're they're trying to, like, go all out, and they're trying to, like, you know, do all of these things and they don't have a team to do all of these things. And I'm like, man, maybe you might need to scale back and don't be upset if you do have to scale back because I mean, you got to work with what you got. You know what I mean? Just get the fan gan finished. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of fan gans are being canceled or they're just stopping because people don't want to, they don't want to scale Stop back. It. Get some help. I accidentally hit that, but yeah, they don't want to scale back at all. So they're, they're just too, 
and, and I get it, you know, when you're a creator, it's just like, you know, you have this vision and you don't want to like go away from that vision because if you do, then it's going to upset you. You feel like you're a failure and whatnot, but it's like, no, dude, like sometimes you just need to scale back. <laughs> like, it's just that, it's that simple. Like, don't, don't cancel your project because of that. You got to work with what you got. I'm going to do work on my fan game. Do your thing. On to chapter four. How the hell do I even talk about chapter four? That's my goal with the other one I'm starting to write. Yeah, do that. So like everything I'm about to talk about is it's completely original draft. It starts out with Kim feeling traumatized about nearly dying the day before in the storm. Slash What's up, Ari? Victimized in the previous chapter. But then Monokuma's like, hey, guys, pack up. We're going somewhere else. That somewhere else being a strange lakeside lodge at the end of the hiking trail. At said lodge, the lights what? shine randomly for whatever reason, and there's no windows or clocks. So, like, no one knows the time, and they can't control the lights. This isn't the motive. It's just a weird gimmick. The group finds movies, they watch them, but some oh, stay the not the horror movies! And have their entire sleep schedules reversed somehow. So now there's like groups of people sleeping on opposite schedules. Again, not the motive, just more weird chapter gimmicks. Speaking of which, Monokuma brings up the motive, but he decides not to tell anyone because it's too traumatizing or something. Eventually, the cast finds a box and soon later a key. And when it's open, they find the entire Danganronpa series from Danganronpa 1 to Danganronpa 53. Oh my, 53? Grandpa? Yeah. Q Danganronpa V4 cast reacts to Danganronpa V3 cast. Death? What the hell? <laughs> oh what? This chapter is rough. That would have probably been very painful. Marie also asks Monokuma why he still hasn't told them the motive since by now it's been a few days. And he tells her that it's so scary he doesn't want to traumatize them yet. But if someone kills before it's revealed, he'd have no reason. That would have been a cool it. reference to see. That is, in fact, the stupid ass motive. It's the fear of an upcoming motive, and it's not subtle. I don't think that motive is impossible. I think you could actually do that motive. Mm. I don't know how I do it. I wasn't gonna do it well, but yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, now, I get it. Feeling just a little nicer since Angela's death messed him up. But let me rewind that real quick. And it's not subtle. But, uh, go back, go back, go back. And he tells her that it's so scary he doesn't want to traumatize them yet. But if someone kills before it's revealed, he'd have no reason to use it. Uh, that is, in fact, the stupid ass motive. It's the fear of an upcoming motive, and it's not subtle. I hmm. don't think that motive. I don't know about that. Is impossible. I mean, it has a lot of potential. I don't know how I do it. I wasn't gonna do it well, but writing that could. might be. By now, Jesse's feeling just a little nicer since hard Angela's to pull death off. Messed him up. Victor is progressively getting meaner, and Alexander's just gone. Snaps. Yeah, after around the midpoint in this chapter, Alexander simply locks himself in his room and says bye, <laughs> which I definitely have not done before. Oh, that's that hot. Last too long since one morning, Monokuma's like, "I was gonna reveal the motive, but someone's dead." They break into what? Alexander's room and find a note about him wanting to kill everyone to end the killing game, but n no body, so they keep searching. After long enough, they find his corpse locked in a cupboard, featuring completely original, not at all traced Emily. Oh! Well, I know there's at least one person out there that's sad about Alexander's death. They make great art too. Anyways, what? Unlike chapter three, I do have some stuff to say about the actual case. Basically, do we at least get to find out about the robot arm himself to end the killing game as with the new revelation that they're all very likely in a TV show Killing everyone would, would ruin whatever plans the people running it had. I have mixed feelings on Who this killed position. Alexander? It really does not seem like an Alexander thing to do. No, he has he's had a uh, Character development up to this point or would have hopefully had So I guess it depends on that, but I don't think no character development would ever make him Commit a mass murder and then no. suicide just yeah. to end the killing game. Not at all. <laughs> he thinks that they're all gonna die anyways. I don't know. He wouldn't do Threaten that. Murder. Unfortunately, while attacking the first person, they managed to overpower him and hit him in self-defense. Smack him. But they seem to go a little too hard and kill the poor dude. I don't know why I said unfortunately there. I guess that's actually a fortunate <laughs> thing that he didn't. He wasn't able to mass murder everyone. But I'm gonna leave that in there because that's kind of funny. So the killer then, not wanting to be a murderer, hides his body and cleans everything up with the intention that no one will ever find him, sealed away forever. 
And then they can Aww. lock his door in from the outside and pretend nothing ever happened. So who's Alexander's unfortunate failed victim and now killer? Oh no. That is Emily. Thanks, Emily and I back. What? This case would have been so sad. No, 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 Steven. No, I thought no, 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 no. Emily never seemed like she would ever kill anyone. I always thought Emily would be a victim, if anything. If anything, late victim. Maybe chapter four, chapter five victim. Killer? Oh, heck no. I got to hear this. Super sad trial. I got to hear Assuming this. Assuming I wrote it right, which, yes, I would have, bitch. Have faith in me. <laughs> well, yeah, Emily was practically forced into killing, and the cast Horse. unwillingly make her pay the price for it. I haven't mentioned it yet, but slowly as the trials go on, Kim grows more independent and less reliant on Marie for everything. She might even do the killing replay for this case, with Emily being fairly close to her by this point and all. So the execution, oh. similar to Marcus, I don't really have an execution for her. There's a lot that I could do. So yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, somebody just said it, Gonta vibes. It is kind of like Gonta. She was forced to kill. <laughs> Blaze Emily was the Gonta, that's why she was too gullible if her or somebody else was at the risk of dying. That makes sense. That makes sense. It makes it tough to I like that. one thing down. What I do know is I want it to involve a saw trap and decisions that could be seen as either selfless or dumb, depending on what you think. Also, at the end of this trial, Victor would tell everyone that what he remembered in Chapter 3 was that he's the mastermind. What? What a shocker. Chapter 5. Almost done. No! I not have... I didn't think that would happen. I was like, there's no way he's going to be the... He's too obvious. He has a pin and everything about it. And it's just like, he really ends up being the mastermind. Much made for this chapter's uh, daily Please life, tell so me that's not true. This should be quick. So chapter five, Monokuma explains that he's not enforcing the killing game anymore. So like, if everyone wanted to, they to just live there for the rest of their lives, they could. This makes literally no sense in the lore, but I never rewrote this, so you'll have to forever think this is the chapter 5 motive. Okay. Everyone's friggin' thrilled about this and becomes, like, lethargic, besides Nora, who's pissed about everyone suddenly not caring about anything. I'm glad Nora Everyone's lasted this long. Avoiding Victor, cause that boy ain't right. At some point in the chapter, they manage to get into Monokuma's lair, which is hidden behind the kitchen. They find a few things on some people's backstories, mainly pointing to the fact that there was some sort of sign up for the show they're on. Okay. And they also find little files on everyone, and the one on Victor says his talent. Victor Moore is actually the ultimate director. Like movie director, so. Oh! Like killing game director, I don't know. So there's that. Yep. What Moving the? On. Nora bullies everyone for getting all lethargic the whole chapter, and particularly Marie. Marie That's and Nora dope. should have had a rivalry going on by now. So when Nora's constantly harassing her, Marie gets irritated and shoves her, but accidentally shoves her at a shower which shatters, so she's like, not good again. This would not have made it into the final thing, because this is kind of stupid. Yeah. This part is weird. <laughs> this part does sound weird. Say that about most of the unreleased stuff. So I'll just continue. So Marie immediately feels awful for like horribly wounding this woman so she takes Nora to Chinatsu who is a very responsible person um yeah Chinatsu takes Nora under her care the next morning when they go to check on Nora she's just missing and while they search for her what? a random BDA plays what there's no body though so like they decide to ask about it and of course go to Chinatsu and she basically tells them everything I had just talked about Monokuma's pissed off that Shinatsu gave them all evidence, so he blasts that woman off to space and forces the cast to, cast to search under a time limit. They what? They this time limit. So that's just the fucking end of Shinatsu. She's been blasted off. <laughs> it's a strange death. So who killed Why? our beloved, clearly not receiving any favoritism and more screen time Why is Nora? Nora dead? The answer is... Shinatsu did, sort of. After Marie brought what is Nora to Chinatsu, Chinatsu neglected to fix her wounds and so just let her die, and then painted her hand white and made it poke out of a pile of clothes so the cast would think it's a mannequin when they're really triggering a BDA. And what? I actually don't hate this idea, but it's really dumb here. So since Marie did leave the killing blow on Nora, Monokuma is absolutely not giving Shinatsu the thrill of being an official killer, so he just names Marie the killer. Absolutely not!
No, 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 no. We can't lose two best girls in one episode. What? Shinatsu gets blasted into space randomly. And then next thing you know, <laughs> Nora's dead. But, you know, they, they, they trigger a BDA because they actually saw... They technically didn't see the body, but the body was there. It was just disguised. And then Marie ends up being the killer because Madakuma's just like, well, you technically hurt her. That was the final blow, so you're the killer. Madakuma executes Hold on. Marie. The cast thinks this is all very unfair, but they can't do anything. What? Which, I mean, it is. Marie does punt Monokuma, though, before her execution. So oh, she better. That. So what is that execution? This one is actually fully planned. Oh, they Again, saw the hand. By okay. The orchestra concept drawing by Vonk. I guess that counts as seeing the body. In square, square, square space. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I like that one. <laughs> her computer. She's in a dark room. She can't leave the room, and the computer seems to be live streaming her webcam. People are begging for her to give an apology, and with it being the only thing she can really do. Okay, this, this, all, this whole chapter right here would have me off. Like, <laughs> and that, I don't know if it, if it would have been in a good way or a bad way, but it would have definitely me off. For sure. She starts What's up, Flora Petals? People in the chat throw insults at her, talk shit about the killing game and the recent trial, all sorts of things. As she types, it turn, sort of turns into a lo-fi beat to type out an apology slash get executed slash be part of a Killing Game 2 video. Okay. With the music reflecting that. It's meant to be That's a bit cool. eerie. The shot not really changing, just her typing as the music plays and a new slowly lowering from above. The note she's trying to write seems pretty generic at first, but as she grows more worried, it almost gets more personal. From Aww. apologizing to her parents for not being what they had hoped for, her apologizing to Nora for inadvertently killing her, Apologizing to her audience for not being the old Marie until eventually the noose wraps around her neck and, the, and it yanks her up, lifting her out of her seat. She dangles from the roof, trying to break free. The chat likely spamming, climb the rope, knowing you bitches. But she eventually suffocates. An eerie shot of her hanging body eliminates by the computer and it fade to black. Fang and tip, if you're. Uh. Okay. I don't, I don't like that execution. That, that's, I think that hits too close to home for me. You know what I mean? I think that's why I don't like it personally, because you know, you see a lot of YouTubers cause I know she's the, the ultimate social media influencer or whatever, the ultimate influencer, but it's like, you know, apology videos can lead to people committing suicide. You know what I mean? I've seen that before. So it's kind of just sad to think about that. I don't know. <laughs> that one just sits way too close to home for me. Making a game a ultimate great vlogger, yeah. For dialogue systems is fungus. Assuming you're using Unity, fungus is the reason Rocky Restarts exists. I freaking love fungus. Yeah, it could have been a sad little trial. I still love Marine. Hopefully, this won't be the last you see of her. Even though her character because YouTubers kind of kill themselves like Etika. Really did not exactly. Give much of a distinct personality. Anyways, this sounds like a good time to mention. If you've ever left a variation of either of these three comments on any of my videos, I hope you have a wonderful life, a loving family, and an amazing job where you make lots of money. Back to the plot. Uh, and with chapter 5 <laughs> over, now we're on chapter 6. This weird ass chapter, it was in fact rewritten, and, well, I don't fully hate it. It's just very strange. If it hits pretty close, then I guess it's effective? Yeah... But I feel like that's like a serious issue that we're kind of going through, like when it comes to, uh, you know, social media influencers and such. I don't know if I would really want to see that represented in a game per se. You know what I mean? But I don't know. It does not match any of the other chapters at all. You'll see. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, bitch. I swear to God. <laughs> Basically, the cast is mega mega fuming from the injustice that was the previous chapter, and so we're all done with this stuff. They all go back into the Monokuma lair and look for more things, finding that apparently a lot of their family had a ha uh, had a helping hand in the production. I so like, Glenn's family lended out their camp, Emily's brother helped build things, 
Jesse's sister voice acts Monokuma, etc. Oh, also, Jesse and Victor are missing from the search? That's weird. Oh, never mind. Jesse's back, and apparently he's called a bus. Yeah, he says he's contacted help and that they all need to go hide from Victor. Okay, strange. He takes them <laughs> to the literal masterminds lair, <laughs> which is different from the mascot lair, and they do <laughs> continue to snoop around in there, finding forms for the actual Danganronpa series and fan sites talking about Danganronpa V4. Victor and Monokuma find the group because they're hiding in the literal most obvious place, so v Victor, Jesse, and Monokuma slash Jesse's sister argue. Turns out Jesse's the traitor. Ignoring that, Victor shoots him in the head for calling a bus, so the three go run and hide in a cabin. Victor comes over to the cabin and torments them, still having the gun, and they'll have a little mini mastermind trial what? in that tiny little cabin. So to explain the lore, in this universe, Danganronpa is an obscure, really old anime. Basically, okay. Victor finds it and is like, holy shit, I love this. So he wants to start his own. Victor literally wants to make his own fangan, except he wants That's to be to death, because he's a obnoxious fangan child. Knowing this would not fly legally and no one would sign up for a death game, he just advertises it as a normal, like, game show acting. Yo, Victor is literally that guy that I saw on Instagram not too long ago. Kit, you know what I'm talking about. I know Kit was in the chat. You know exactly what I'm talking about. There was a guy on Instagram literally, like, posting randomly, t telling people that they wanted to make a real killing game. And, like, asking people to, like, you know, apply for it. Gig. That's Victor. <laughs> luring people in for his shitty IRL fangan. He wants to take part in it too, though, and get the authentic experience, so he erases his memory completely. Because it can't really run without someone ensuring everything goes smoothly, he gets the most respectable dude he knows to do to know the truth and keep everything running. Jesse. Jesse literally cared about nothing, so when Victor came to him about this, he was like, sure, whatever, I don't give a shit. What? After the events of the killing game, oh, boy, down, he simply regrets this and wants to end it, gaining a new appreciation for life. So after getting all that down in the fake trial, the bus finally arrives. Kim, Harmony, and Julian all know they need to escape, but Victor has a gun, so it's like, tough. Eventually, Julian tells the two that he'll do the, take the most dangerous position and try to fight the gun off him, while the two either run or help him out. They actually do this, and Kim stabs that bitch in the neck as Julian tries to fight him. Julian is unfortunately shot during this, though, and dies. Harmony did nothing the entire time. What? After a sad, slow bleeding out scene, of course, now covered in Victor's blood, Kim and Harmony walk to the bus and bus all traumatized and get on, leaving the camp as our two only survivors. By the way, I know now is not- Two survivors? That's it? Literally two! Did you just hear that whole ending? What? Julian dies? Everyone died, pretty much. <laughs> Not the time to mention this, but I'm like, I'm reading Holy this, it's like two in the morning right now because I, as I said earlier, I started this way too late and I'm talking fast. Get the fuck over it, bitch. Deal with it. Don't bully me in the comments. <laughs> Don't bully. So that was a weird ass chapter six. <laughs> I love Steven. Kind of fun. Um. I bet no one expected Harmony to survive, though. I didn't expect Harmony to survive. Kind of iconic. Especially not being the last Love two. Man. Kim and Harmony. <laughs> Julian dying for no fucking reason. Oh, no, Kim and so Harmony, overall, that's it? Yeah. Um, I'll give my opinions on each chapter now. Just like a little small section for this. Chapter 3 was weird, and but it had a lot of potential with the storm thing. If I were to actually, like fully write that out i think i would have adored it um chapter four is so bad it's embarrassing yeah we're gonna pretend chapter four didn't exist chapter yeah five is two um it's probably worse actually yeah and shinatsu dies for no reason similarly to julian i'll be honest with you steven if you would have went if like if this fan game would have continued and i would have saw chapter five and if it would have played out like that i would have been <laughs> Absolutely not, dog. No. They can twin on that. And then chapter six is just silly shit. The goofiest chapter six of all time. They're running around all crazy, stabbing each other. Like, calm down. God, talk. 
have a have a nice conversation. Actually, I did because like they did a whole trial for some reason to recount. Victor was like, "You should recount the lore to me, Kim. That sounds fun, right?" What the? That, it's finally over. Rocky restarts is fully dead. Thank goodness. Hallelujah. Two survivors, bruh. Happy holidays. Oh, did you see that? No, but I'm about to rewind and fight and see it. Happy holidays. Oh, another fan game oh, too. Did you see that? What was that? Did seems like we have a fan game tip. Probably a shitty fan. Please don't hire VAs immediately. Seriously. Oh like, my god! Hiring VAs super early will mean that yes! you'll likely be left with a long stretch of having yes! nothing to work on and just being in your empty fangin. In my Thank opinion, you! you don't have to listen, but I think you should wait until you absolutely need them so you yes! can actually give them work. Right! It's fun to get voices for your characters early. Like, don't get me wrong. We all want to have our, like, we, we want to know about that about our characters. Yeah. But it's not fun when they have to leave between parts because you casted them three years ago and you're only now releasing episode two of your prologue. VAs will ine <laughs> they'll likely inevitably need to leave because life happens and fans take a long time to make. Yeah. So it's better to have the work you need for them ready as soon as you cast and plan for the long term. Right. And remember, not doing VAs is always an option too. The VA community is wonderful and they deserve projects to be in. Yeah. If managing VA sounds too stressful, which it can definitely be, and the uncertainty of whether they'll stay or not long term too worrying, no, it's not a requirement at all. So yeah, um, thanks for watching, I guess. I really hope you don't come out of this video like, wow, Eternal Endings is gonna suck ass with this <laughs> storyline, holy, uh, no it's not. I'm a better writer now, I'm actually confident in my writing, I think. I'm glad that he learned from it. And That's good. What you're reading, what, or what I read out today and what you might read in the Google Doc, that is all when I was like a 15 year old okay. yonder a simulator fan. Oh no, not that no game. Offense. I'm still uh, not I'm that game. <laughs> Anything but that game. Oh my God, Steven, stop. I was just an obnoxious <laughs> little child. And now I'm barely older, but I have a like um, superiority complex over my youngest, like, Time is weird. So yeah, happy holidays. Read the Google Doc if you want more information, unless you've already read it. Um, thanks for the ad money. Thanks for the Goodbye. ad money. Okay, you saw the ads. Is that the my? No, nah, not the hand of Montana. Why are you doing this? Not the mighty Cyrus. I'm gonna cry. Oh my god, not the Miley Cyrus, bro. Why are we doing the Hannah Montana season finale? Why are you gotta be like that? Okay, I'm gonna say this uh, before we go into the next video. That was a great video by Steven. I'm glad that Steven learned from all of that. And hopefully other fan gang creators can learn from this video. This is a great video to watch if you're a creator. Steven dropped so many tips. He dropped so many ideas and things that people could actually like... Uh, probably execute in their own fan gans and I, I i hope that steven you know doesn't feel like people are going to be mad at him for not finishing rocky restarts because honestly as great as rocky restarts was and it was my favorite fan gan i'm just glad that steven was able to learn from it and seems like he really enjoyed the experience of just being able to create something so that makes me happy, you know? As long as he's happy, I'm happy. So I will support his next projects. Uh, what is it? Eternal Endings? I will, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna support the heck out of that whenever the prologue comes out and we start getting more stuff out of it. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm glad we got a video like that. That definitely gave the Rocky Restarts fan base some closure, right? Cause I wanted some closure. And I'm glad that Steven gave us some closure like, hey, Here's the video, here's the death order, here's the plot, here's the killers, here's the victims. That's it, you know? I love him for that. Hope will never die.